Lighting in Blender is so important. I mean, you can't make a scene without it. Yet, most people don't understand the core principles and mindset surrounding lighting. I mean, I know I didn't. My scenes looked flat and boring. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys some principles around creating cinematic lighting in Blender so you can make anything look cool. Even if you guys know how these lights work, make sure you stick around because there are some tips you might not know about. So point lights are great for adding a rim light or an edge to your subject so that it separates it from the background. And if you control the radius, which is just the size of the point light, you can change like the fall off that it has from the rim light. And then if you change the power, you can change the intensity of that. So yeah, very simple, just great for adding that little bit of edge light that just highlights your subject. Then you have your spotlight, which is great for adding a direct beam of light on your subject. And I normally use it as kind of my fill light or the light that adds the most light into my scene. So settings you can change, the blend here, I just keep that at one and you can see the feathering it does on the light fall off over on the side here. So make sure you keep that pretty high. The spot size here is where the light is focused. So if I put that really intense, you can see, I can just get the effect where it also does some edge lighting. Or if I make it bigger, I can get it to light everything. So that's definitely a cool setting to play with. Power is the same. Radius is kind of how harsh it is. So if you have it really small, the shadows and everything will be harsher, but as you get it bigger, it'll have more fall off and look f flatter even. So make sure you keep an eye on that setting. And our last light here is the area light. Now this one is another great one for adding in some fill light. It doesn't have the same focusing uh, settings that Spotlight has, and that's kind of the main difference between the two. But otherwise, it's kind of just a big box of light and it radiates it out. You can change the size of the area light, which is like changing the radius of the Spotlight, where it makes it harsher, or if it makes the fall off more soft. So you play with that, power is the same. The beam shape and spread here is an interesting setting to play with. You can really crank that down and it becomes like a really focused beam of light. So that's definitely a cool effect you can play with. Another setting you might be wondering what it does is multiple importance. So if you turn this off and on, you can see here the reflection of the light in this cube is off when multiple importance is off and it's there when multiple importance is on. So basically, if you have a reflective object and you don't want the light to be seen like a hot spot, then you just turn multiple importance off and you won't see that reflection at all. Another handy thing you can do when lighting a subject is add an object constraint to the light and choose track to and then pick your cube from this list or use the eyedropper. And so now when I move the light with G, the light will always follow the cube so I can just move it around and see which position I like. Now, let's break down the techniques I just showed you in this scene that's from my short film that I'm currently working on. So let's start off with the big spotlight here. It's doing the main illuminating in my scene, the heavy lifting. However, you can see it's got too harsh of a shadow here. The, the fall off from light to dark is too harsh, but we'll fix that later. First, let's look at the spotlight settings. So it's 3000 watts here, so quite a bit. Uh, the radius is high because if we bring it down, you see you get these shadows here, but I want you to be able to see that, so that's why it's a bit higher. Multiple importance is off, just so we don't get that hot spot here that's a bit too distracting. Um, my spot size is quite wide because I just wanted to make sure that all of this was illuminated, but if I bring that down here, you can see what it does, where it's just a little bit of light. And the lower you bring the spot size down, the higher you have to make your watts to compensate for the fact that the light is only going in a very small beam of light. Now let's fix this harsh shadow and add some rim lighting. So that's what these point lights here are for. So if we add them and you can see what that does, it adds this kind of glow uh, white edge to the heart to separate it from the darkness. You can also see here, this fall off is a lot nicer, not perfect, because you can kind of see it's like three points, but it's a lot better than it was before. Now let's take a closer look at the point lights. By the way, while you're making a scene, don't be afraid to hide and unhide your lights just to see what you're adding, if you need them, and if you like the effect that you're creating. It's a really good way to fine tune the lighting in your scene. So for example, this one here is only two watts with quite a big radius, but if I turn that off and on, you can kind of see it's reducing the amount of shadow that's right here. 
So I'll just do that again, look. It just gets too dark in there. We want to be able to see that. Then we have another one here that's four watts. These are very low wattage because they're radiating light in all directions and they're quite close to the heart. So that's why I'm not making them too bright. So if I turn this point light off and on, you can see down the bottom here, it's what's helping this not get too black too quickly. If I turn that back on, see, yeah, it's just the, making the fall off nicer. You can see what this point light here is doing. It's creating that rim light around the edge and it actually has multiple importance on because that is what cr is creating that rim light is that reflection of the point light and if I change the radius you see that makes the rim light go even further down the heart or it makes it super harsh so that's definitely something cool to play with and now we have our final point light which is creating this rim light along the outside here so if we turn that on and off you can see that's really doing a lot I have multiple importance on it as well because that is what is creating that rim light effect so at 30 watts, I had these point lights higher at some point, but it was just making it too blown out and it didn't look as good as it looks now. Now I don't have any area lights in this scene and that's because the area lights were a bit too flat or harsh for me. I couldn't find a good in between. They are nice for creating some fill. I just didn't think this heart needed it, but um, definitely feel free to use them in your scene. They're very useful sometimes. Now, the final trick that I used in this scene is something that photographers use in their real life photos. It's reflectors. What they have is these big reflective sheets that they hold up near their subject that reflect the fill light back on and that just adds a bit of a soft edge and fall off into the shadows. So you can see here, I've added some planes. I've added the constraint track to, so they're, they're always facing the human heart. I've changed their color to more of a red because if it was white, it would be too distracting. And you can see what they're doing here. If I hide them and then unhide them, they're just creating a little bit more bounce light down the bottom of the heart here. If I hide them, it's a bit too dark and I want you to actually kind of see the outline of the heart. So that's why I put them in here, just to bounce all the light that's in this scene back onto the heart and illuminate that edge a little bit more. You really wanna create a nice fall off in your lighting. You don't want it to be too harsh because in real life, there's so many things that light bounces off. So it doesn't end up being harsh but you also want contrast, like you want points that are quite bright and hot spots that draw the viewer's eye in, but you also want points of darkness because if everything's well lit, well, it just looks flat and then it looks bad. But if you have points of contrast and high points and dark points, well, then you can make anything look good. You can chuck an image texture into the roughness, add some reflections and boy, will it look amazing just because your lighting isn't making everything lit up. In fact, the darker your lighting, the more interesting it will look because there's points of mysteriousness and points that you can't see. So I would always lean towards more darker lighting so you don't have to texture everything to perfection. And so there are those shadows and those hot spots that really draw the viewer's eye in. I mean, look at some of William Langren's projects as an example. You have this darkness with these nice reflections that the texture doesn't have to be that incredible because we don't see it. And then we have this hot spot in the middle here that's really drawing our eye in to the subject of the image. So we have this darkness and we can't really tell what's going on here, but we can tell what's going on in the middle here where we want to look. And in this shot as well, I mean, it's so bright here that we're losing detail, but it looks so cool and cinematic because it's drawing our eyes in and there's so much contrast between this point here and this point over here where it gets its blackest. But don't worry if your lighting doesn't look like William Langren's in a couple of days. Lighting is just another skill in Blender and it takes time, practice and effort to get good at it. And as you start learning it more and more, it'll just become second nature. You'll know exactly what kind of light and what color it is and how much power you'll need to make your scene look better. So just keep practicing with it. Hey, thanks for watching guys. And if you've watched this far into the video, you deserve to know I'm working on my short film right now. So that's why there's gonna be less YouTube videos for a bit. Anyways, make sure you like, subscribe, check out my Gumroad page and keep going with Blender. You got this.